Hey, it's Mike from DriveAdia.com, and welcome to my Make After Effects Non-Scary series that I've developed. Today we're going to talk about the position tool. Now I'm going to have you doing this video with an understanding you have somewhat of a grip or a grasp on After Effects. Now I'm going to go back and do other videos that give the um, interface explanation, but for now, it's my first video, starting with position tool, and I'll work backwards depending on what questions you guys have, because I don't want to guess. First thing we're going to do is make a composition because I can't design on anything here. So if I do Command N, that will do a composition. 1920 by 1080 is fine. HG whatever. I don't touch this. Comp one, sure. Let's give it position. No, that doesn't spell right. Position tutorial. Tutorials. Frame rate. Keep it 24. That's fine. Let's make it a minute 13. Okay. Blah blah. Background. Great. Great. Awesome. Okay. So now we've got something to get drawn, and we know we have something drawn because we have a timeline down here, but now nothing exists on this timeline. First thing we need to do is get something there. So there's many ways to do this. For now, we're going to focus on the shape tool. If I take the shape tool, two ways I can put a shape on the stage. I can double click. Boom, it, gives me, it fills the entire stage up. It gives me a shape layer that is here, and I can move it around. Now I want to be square though, so in this instance I would go down to rectangle path. All this other stuff is things that you don't need to know. Just focus on where my cursor is going. Size, let's unclick this because if I said I want to make this 300 by 300, it's going to hold and restrain this. So unclick that and then you can do things separately. It's cool, that's one way. Select that, delete it, because what we're going to do is we're going to learn key commands. I hit Q for square. No idea why that's Q. I'm sure there's a reason, but whatever. I'm going to draw a square. Draw a square. I have no constraints. If I hold shift down, I've got a square. Now, great. And now to deselect this, I do shift command A. I'm talking as if I'm working on a Mac because I am working on a Mac, but I'm talking as if you're working on a Mac, which you might not be. Um, so some of my key commands might be a little crappy to you. But my advice, if you're on a PC, then you should get a Mac. All right. Sometimes I reference PC of different tools, so whatever. All right, great. We've got the select tool. Now we've got this, but I don't want that to be there. What I want to do is go up here to this tool, the pan behind anchor point tool, and grab it and move this to the center. How do I know it's in the center? I don't, but if I hit command, now I know it's in the center because it's locking to the points as I'm doing this. So I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to get the uh, selection tool. You can hit V. Now I can start moving this around. I'm going to hit the plus sign to zoom in here on the timeline. If I hit minus, it goes back out. It shows me that this whole area is going to be a minute, 13, 22, whatever that is, uh, long. That's the entire length of the video. But we're not going to need all of that. We're just focusing in this area because I like a nice you know, breathing space gonna hit the plus sign a couple times because we're gonna work within like three seconds let's do that now I don't want to go all the way back and grab the end of this work area uh, bar so I'm gonna hit N as in Nathaniel or Nathan's hot dogs and that means that when I'm reviewing this with my little preview tool or the preview uh, area here that means it's just gonna keep looping in this area so I'm gonna do that real quick and you'll just see the scrubber moving there's nothing happening because we haven't done anything so let's go do some stuff hopefully I haven't lost you I'll try to keep it more simple but you're gonna learn some other things along the way the way I'm going to get to this is if I look at this transform panel, I've got anchor point, which is this. I can move that around. Position means I can move it around here. Scale, I can make it up and down. Rotation, I can move it. And opacity, I can bring it up and down. We're going to focus on this guy. So I'm going to hit P for position. And I'm like, okay, cool. At zero seconds, I want the box to be here. And at two seconds, I want it to be over here. Great, I just made it move. Now when I scrub it, it should be moving back and forth. Now if I go back to zero, wait, why isn't it there? That's because I didn't tell it where it should be at what time. And the way you do that globally in After Effects is to use position. Now you can get really advanced and use expressions and crap like that, but for this, you are a beginner and this is what I want you to focus on. So we're going to put this little clock is going to this little diamond. This little diamond is telling me that at this point in time, 
this is where I want, this is the position that exists. And the only way to change that is to put another diamond anywhere else or multiple diamonds and that tells it where it's going to position next. And that means that if I, at one second, or around there, if I want it to be at the other end of the screen, I'm going to drag it there. That's telling me After Effects that, oh, at 20 seconds, or whatever this is, um, or a second, whatever, I think I said a minute, it's a, it's a second, whatever, sue me, um, that the box should be here. And at the beginning, it's going to show me where the beginning point was, which was there. Now, the way you have to see this is this all exists in time. It's zero to whatever it's going to be. That along the way, whatever you do, it's going to tell it where it's going to be. I hope that makes sense, because it makes sense to me. Here is where the box existed, and when I get to almost a second, it has just now moved to the right to 20 frames. That's what that means. Um, that and You'll see there's this dotted line that shows you the path that it took. Hopefully, does that make sense to you? Now, if I were to take these and I were to move them up, that just means that this thing is going to exist on the left until we tell it to move right. Okay? Again, if there's nothing here, that's determined by the space, this dot right here. So that means that from this space here, it's existing in that position. And if I go to the right, it's going to now exist in that position. Now, since I didn't tell it at any point, at any time after this to move anywhere, it will always exist there for the entire length of this video. That is how this works, okay? So let's mess around with this thing's movement. I want to bring this one diamond back to here in the beginning. If I want to lock, I hold the shift key and it will, it'll lock to it. And I don't want this thing to live two seconds. I'll show you why in a second. So right now, if I were to hit control zero, it will render first. Now what it's doing right there is this thing has to know, has to draw what that path looks like within its memory. That's what this is doing right here. So when you first start to do a, rend a preview, like a, a, uh, a RAM preview, it's filling it, it's drawing the spaces in, and then once it has them all in memory, it's going to play them. Um, that's why it takes a very long time to render things. You hear people in video say render and shit like that. Things like that. Sorry, I apologize. This video is going on LinkedIn. Um, that is what it's doing. It's a little complicated, don't worry about it, but if you're really gonna get into editing, you'll figure it out along the way. So for now, I'm gonna hit Control Zero. It has figured it out in the memory how fast it's going to be. It's drawing every single frame to do this, and that's why it's doing this. It's going very slow, which is very annoying, which is fine, because that's the actual speed it's gonna go. I am going to now speed it up. That means that if I want this position to get there faster, I move it left, because that means if it's at two seconds, it's going to take this thing two seconds to go all the way across the screen. If I move it to three seconds, it's going to take it three seconds to go all the way across the screen. And if I render that, see it's drawn and filling all those blanks, now it's going to go natural speed. It's going to be super slow. But if I move this to the left and I preview it, it is now moving faster. But I don't want to sit here and wait for all this time. So I'm going to hit N again as Nathan's hot dogs in control zero. And it's just going to loop in that area so I can see if I'm editing. I just want to focus on this part. You know, if I was if I had this whole thing set up with this giant animation, I don't want to have to like preview this every time and have to wait through this thing to watch a minute minute and 13 seconds just to see a second. So that's why this whole work area makes sense. And I hope that makes sense to you. All right. So if I hit control zero, now it's moving. All right, so let's talk about how to move it around again. So we've got it here, it's gonna end, but I want it to go exactly back to where it was. So I can guess and I can say, all right, good. Yeah, that looks about right. If I wanna be accurate, hit command Z there to undo that. Just select this, hit command C to copy, which is a global function. If you're even in your word, if you do command or control C, it will copy. And I'm gonna hit command V to paste, which is again is a global global function in a lot of programs. It took the exact coordinates, which is its X position and its Y position, and put it here. Now if I move it here, you're seeing, if I'm scrubbing this along, you're only seeing that the X position is moving left and right. And this is just basic math. X, and, X position is horizontal, Y position is up and down vertical. We learned this in math or whatever it was, geometry, algebra, physics, basics. 
So now we go across, we're seeing it's staying on the same plane, but it's moving right back. So these coordinates are the same as these coordinates. Boom, we nailed it. Um, all right, good. So then we hit control zero. We're seeing it go, it's going to go left and the right and then left and the right. But it looks just too, just, I don't know, boring and straightforward, and I hate it. That's the thing with animation is you have to give it life. That's the key to telling a story, is that the movement has to go along with what the message is. If the movement, if you're supposed to be putting someone in distress or duress or whatever it is, a stressful situation, the movement should tell that story. You know, if you're watching a horror movie, if you are listening to the music, the music isn't all happy while someone's getting their head sliced off. It's very intense and so it causes you that feeling. So in an animation, you whatever story you're telling, you want to be able to describe that in movement. You know, if we were telling a story and we wanted to just be very boring and blah, we have like, all right, well, here we go. We're moving right and left or left and right, great. But if we give it some life, we can be more fun with this. Now, to close these keys up, let's say I wanted to make it move a little faster. I can select this and move it over and move it over again. But again, that becomes very time consuming. I have a ton of stuff on the stage. So I'm going to hit undo, undo, command Z. If I select all three of these, if I hold option and select this last point and do this, it'll sandwich it. That's really helpful. If I grab the middle point and do it, it's going to grab everything. If I grab the beginning point, it'll do it this way. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. If I had multiples of these, and I had their different positions. So let's say, let's say, I'll just do that real quick. Um, I hit U to show everything. Say like this and this and this and this, right? So it's doing showing different, you know, there's different boxes now, different speeds. If I were to, if I wanted to move all of these, I wouldn't grab this one and do option because it would move them all. I would grab the, the furthest one on the right and then it would close them up. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, a little extra bonus for you. Okay, so back to making this thing move a little bit cooler. Let's use the graph editor. This thing was scary as hell to me in the beginning, but it's ridiculously effective. It's made a lot of my work look a lot better. And what it's doing is it's showing you speed. This is a linear movement. It's like, I move here, I move there. This is the speed I'm moving and it's boring. But if I give it some curves, what well, you want to make sure that what you, your screen must match edit speed graph. That's what I want to see because if I do anything else, it just looks different and it's just a lot more stuff that, you know, it's going to confuse you. So just get the speed graph, get rid of the reference graph, and here we go. Okay. And if I want to zoom in a little bit, because if I hit minus sign, it might be really far out. I can get there fast by hitting this, and that brings it up. But I have to select these endpoints. Let's say that I deselected. I'm like, oh, crap, I have to select them. I was like, oh, I need to get there to there. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, let me hit this again. Okay. Let me zoom out and now let me select all these points and hit that again. Great, now we see it. Zoom out a little bit. This is the tool, the easy ease that I want to use. I'm going to click that. Now you'll see a big difference when I'm rendering this. There's a little bit more life. It looks like there's a bit more push on it, some air, some gravity, or more air, not gravity. But I want to get this thing to just uh, loop a little bit. So control zero, boom. See, it almost, it's like, it, it's almost alive at this point, which is really just more visually appealing. So I'm going to do another box above it to give you an, a reference. I'm going to hit duplicate, which is command D, and it's taking the exact same shape, the exact same stuff that it had, and it just moved it. Just it, It's almost if you had a translucent, transparent film in math class back in the day where they would draw markers on one and lay it on top of another one that was already drawn on, and but they can move them around. That's what layers work like in these scenarios. But if I want to move, I was like, oh, okay, I just want to move that box up. The problem is that it's, I'm not selecting the points, I just move the box up itself, and that's not going to be helpful. So I'm going to select these, and I'm going to grab this little box here or here, and I'm going to move it up. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this here and move it down. Okay, that's hopefully you just get it and that's what happens. So I'm going to play the two of them. And now they're just going, they're going to go left to right, left to right. Now let's take away the coolness of the first one. So I could just hit command and click on it and it makes the diamonds, it makes it linear. And you can see that if we go back to the graph tool, it's linear again. So let's control zero. 
Let's look at this. Now what's happening is that the top one is what's more fluid, right? The other one's just going, I just go back and forth. The other one's like, yeah, I'm kind of just kind of grooving, sliding there. It's a lot more fun. Now they are, however, here. And if I jump to here, they are landing at these points at the same exact time. And I'm jumping through these keyframes by using K as in Kellogg's or Kyle, or I'm sorry, K goes let right. And I use J as in Jello or Jolly Ranchers to go left. Now, if I want this box here to win, no, this box on top, I want it to win, I would just move this over and say, oh, okay. So it got that point fast, but if I'm still scrubbing, they both are going to end at the same time. Now, even though this looks like it made it, you'll see there's this small little shift that it's moving. So it's move. It's both hitting the, the finish line at the same time. To fix that, I would just move this left. So that means that it's just getting there faster. So that box wins. So it's boom, boom. I'm faster. I'm the hare. The bottom's the tortoise. That's it. Um, so that's it. Now, if I wanted to kind of give it a little bit extra, I could maybe make it go down. Um, and the way I can do that is, let's say here, um, I would just bring it down a little bit. Okay, so that's like, all right, boom, I'm going there, and I'm going back. So I play that, it's like, oh, I'm going to go down to that position and get back, and that position and get back. But if I didn't want to do that, if I wanted to just swoop down, I can just adjust these anchor points here. So if I could move these around, oops, and what it'll do is it'll swoop down to that point and then go back over. So it's swooping down and going over, swooping down and going over. Now, but I didn't want it. Now, if I wanted to go there and back on that line, let me delete this here. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I don't want to delete that. I want to keep that. Um, uh, it's not going to work. No, it's not going to work the way I want it to. If I want to match the way back, then I would just take this handle and I would make it match as much as I can. So now it's going to swoop down and back, even though it's hitting that guy. It's like hitting him in the head like, ah, I'm faster. Take that other green box that you're slow. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's, you know, something could kind of take a little bit of your time if you stayed this long. If you have any questions, just message me on LinkedIn or you can email me at uh, mike at drive80.com. I'm always down to give some tips on this stuff, especially this stuff's very valuable when you just want to do something very simple that you can animate. You can utilize these things for Instagram, for Facebook, something that makes it more visually appealing for your videos that you don't need to hire someone to do this because, you know, no one wants, no one wants to spend days waiting for something that could be done this fast from somebody. And a lot of animators, they don't want to quote out this crap because they're like, I want to spend time on some better stuff. Keep on, keep on.